Hey guys, it's AerylDZ here, bringing you another video, and this is a tutorial of Rain Meter, and I recently just picked this up, and I learned a lot about it from my friends. Uh, I know a lot of people that are really professional into this stuff, and they take a lot of time uh, to learn this stuff, so I figured I'd just pick it up and kind of show you the gist of how to get started and some of the plugins that I use and that uh, look really professional. Now I don't usually use uh, this background. Um, I tried recording this tutorial early, but I earlier, but I kind of failed. Uh, let me just bring out my uh, my background if I can find it somewhere. Um, there we go. Uh, this is my usual setup. Just let it load real quick. All right, there we go. Um, this is my usual setup. And this is the full rain meter. So I didn't mute the music because I do have the music playing in the background or uh, different music. But basically it will take any sounds that are played through your headphones and it will play um, as a visualizer on your screen. Um, which looks really cool and it's one of the favorite things I have on here. Uh, so first thing you want to do is go to rainmeter.net. Uh, download the final release and once you install it it will look like this so this is how it looks it just says welcome to rain meter and then finding skins and all that stuff and then what you can do is just right click unload 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 and then you can get started installing your uh, things uh, so I'm gonna just go back to mine and kind of show you what I do. So these are the four plugins that I currently use and they're the only ones that I really use. Um, but it is Fountain of Colors. Uh, this is one of the best visualizers I think or I like because it's easy to use um, and uh, also has advanced stuff. But um, then I have the Launcher which is just text-based uh, opening up programs. I really like it. It's really clean and neat. Um, then we have the clear simple time. Uh, this is just clock and things like that. Uh, I haven't learned too much about editing this and I didn't really bother, um, although I should. And then I also have glass vintage, which I used to get this bar. I didn't really fiddle with it, so sorry if some of the things uh, are just very, just completely stolen. Um, so yeah. So the first thing I'm going to cover is the, oh, let me just say... Uh, when you download this, when you download these plugins and you open it, uh, all of these will be checked. But you will press install and it has load included skins. So it will automatically load on your desktop and it will just, um, it'll just be in the middle like this and then you can just snap it uh, to your taskbar or wherever you want. Um, if you want to line it up with your background, which I heavily suggest, go on a thing like reddit.com uh, slash r slash anime wallpaper. Uh, you have wallpaper and then you have anime or um, wallpaper dump. Uh, those are the best uh, places to get wallpapers, in my opinion. Or, of course, you can go on Google, whatever you like. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm just going to use the ones that I have already installed or already have rather um, some guard graphic design folder backgrounds and then uh, I do have this uh, this looks really cool with a visualizer um, just along this line that looks pretty cool uh, and then you have just the uh, like something like this where you can um, kind of line up visualizers and plugins and stuff like that along this line which I this um, this wallpaper looks really nice. I just typically, I just don't use it because I don't really like this anime character. Uh, so I just stick with mine. And I don't really sync anything with the backgrounds. Uh, you'll see more of the professional uh, rain meter skins. They'll kind of just work with the background. And I'll have visualizers um, on the background and such. Uh, but I just like to use mine. Anyways, uh, first thing we're going to cover is how to edit the fountain. Um, so you can see, first things first, it will start in single color. 
Now I like to change it to random colors. It's purely up to you. Uh, random colors just has a um, it slowly changes colors over a period of time. Wallpaper colors it tries to find the wallpaper colors that are in, and then it will sync it up to that, um, and such. So you can kind of go with that. Uh, display. Uh, this is just um, number of bars. This typically just increases the range um, of the bars. And then bar width is of course the thickness of it. Uh, I like to keep mine thin. Just matter of preference, completely up to you. Uh, I think I had it on five. All right. And then bar spacing. That's just how close. Things like that. Um, not gonna be changing it too much. I think I had it on 11. But, uh, and then you have height, and then you have rotation angle. Now, this is very important uh, to lining this stuff up. For instance, I'm on this, and I turn the rotation angle. Uh, you'll see that it's kind of dipping into it, and it doesn't really look good. Uh, you can scroll wheel on this. This is like the only thing that you can actually scroll wheel with, which is kind of sad. I really wish you can do accurate measurements, but you have to kind of click. It doesn't even let you click and drag. You just have to click. Uh, so if that can be improved, definitely like that. But anyways, um, then you have audio sensitivity thing you want to change. Uh, it really changes the uh, the amount it is affected uh, by audio. Let's play this. Uh, I think I screwed up. length of my thing. Alright. I think that looks fine. Alright, so that's it for the fountain. Now we're going to move on to uh, this. Uh, uh, Alright, there we go. Um, then you got clear system clock and you got uh, different settings. Now pretty much all of them are going to be running off uh, text. Um, so, yeah, I I don't take too much time learning about this because uh, I just installed this for the clock. That's really all I wanted it for. Um, and as for the buttons, now this is one thing that I really took time to learn about uh, because I thought it was really cool. Um, so first things first, it's going to have a ton of dialogue. It's going to be all across your screen. You're going to want to right click, go to the launcher, go to apps, scroll down, go to path 8, and then you're going to delete the right click and edit. Um, and then that'll get rid of the uh, the starting stuff and then you have a bunch of here's uh, which is like this now this is the easy method you can use the launcher however uh, I don't like to use the launcher um, I like to do the advanced settings and do edit skin uh, it's purely up to you but uh, I'm just gonna teach you this way so there's the passive app Alright, so you want to go under the individual apps that covers the individual buttons. There's the app passive and the app active. The passive affects what when you're not hovering over it. What, active is when you are hovering over it and when you click it. So passive, you want to change both the names to the app that you're using. Now you can do like a little Easter egg and say like Steam and then you'll say uh, Praise Gaben or something, you know, whatever. Uh, that's something that you can do if you want a little Easter egg. Um, in fact, I'll just show you, show it right now. Uh, you can just right-click refresh skin, and then it will just say that when you do it. Um, but anyways, it's purely up to you. All right, so uh, the next thing, this is custom that I did that I really liked. Um, I did font size 30. That is pretty much the default size. You can change it smaller if you'd like. I just like the big buttons because, um, I don't know, it just looks more aesthetic to me. And I don't really have that much buttons. Um, then I have font size 35 when on the active, so it kind of like increases in size when I hover over it. Now, 
by default I'm pretty sure it doesn't increase in size I just did that because I think it looks cool it's completely up to you and then this is where it gets um, tricky you need to find the program path of the individual app that you want to launch now uh, I'm gonna just locate steam and show you how I did it so uh, you're gonna locate where steam is installed so minus program files 86 uh, and then you scroll down to steam and then it is right here steam.exe so what you want to do is right click here copy address as text and then you're going to paste <coughs> this and then you'll see it's program files 86 slash or backslash steam and um, what you're gonna wanna do is go back here this is just this folder so you're gonna wanna find the individual app that you want to get and you're going to find that exact name everything is cap sensitive and everything I believe I'm not exactly sure but I just do every cap and everything um, so the app is called steam and then you're gonna add exe um, to it and it will force it to run the exe um, so as you can see press steam opens up chrome opens up and so forth so this is kind of the things you can do just make sure you change the uh, the program path and then you can just fiddle with the size and the stuff the default colors are gray and then white when you hover over I like that because um, it just looks aesthetic to me and I just I don't want to change the colors I think it really looks really nice um, and it kind of just blends in with my background so I don't really have to see it that much uh, which is what I like uh, so that's really all I'm gonna cover uh, this bar thing that came from uh, the glass vintage that was just uh, I don't think it loads any of it because it has so much things in it uh, so we're gonna do is just go to glass vintage and then um, just go to bar and then click bar and then it will activate and then it will just pop up and then everything so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions or concerns just let me know down in the comments and I'll help you as best as I can but anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to check out Jack's video of his setup that he just did and I think it looks really nice so make sure to check it out and uh, peace.